Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths, I work at IPM, Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. This video is all about the Power9 Scale-Out Machine, model S924. This is the first look around the machine. I'm going to point out some of the highlights of the machine on a couple of slides, and then we'll actually have a look at the front, the inside, and the back of the machine itself. So this is the front of the machine, and I must say it's very nicely made indeed. 19 inches across and 4U high, a standard sort of size for our machines. There is a 2U high version of this machine, the S922, we'll look at that in a second. Inside the box we have the Power 9 process with 8 billion transistors, quite a big hike from the previous generation. In these scale-up machines we have one or two sockets, that's up to 24 CPU cores in here, and it goes up to 4 gigahertz. Around the base of the Power 9 heat sinks we have 32 DIMMs, they are DDR4, that gives us up to 4 terabytes. They come in various sizes from 16 to 128 gigabytes. At the back there's a stack of 4 small power supplies. This will allow the machine to actually run with just 2, so you can actually have 2 failures or 2 of the cords fail or a PDU fail at the back of your rack and you can carry on running. At the front there are 6 air moving devices, they're not actually fans, we'll look at those in a second when we pull one out. At the back we have up to 11 PCI adapter slots, 5 of those are generation 4 for extra performance. There are many storage options, this diagram is actually showing you a split disk configuration where you can have 6 disks in one operating system and 6 disks in another, typically used with power machines to boot the two VIO servers that are supporting everything else. There's also space over here for an RDX driver, which is a removable hard disk. That's a pretty nifty, uh, cheap and cheerful backup option. You can also run it as uh, 18 disks, and then we have advanced caching and array controllers for extra performance and functions. Of course, with power, we often use the fiber channel adapters in the back to connect to your SAN disks. The internal disk can be regular disks or solid state drives and we also have a new option for four NVMe drives and each of those four can go into different operating systems if you want. Then we have remote I.O. drawers uh, for more disks and more adapters. So that's the S924, but he has some friends. We actually have six machines in his range. There's the S922, which is 2U high. Of course, you can't cram quite as much stuff in the uh, smaller box, but that can be very useful. Still has the 4 terabytes of memory. Then we have the L922, which is the uh, same again, but uh, for Linux-only environments. We have a S912, which is a cut-down S922. If you don't need all the CPU power and memory, then you can take that model instead. There's also two H models which are used for running the SAP HANA environment in particular. SAP HANA of course runs on Linux but you are allowed up to 25% of the CPUs to use AIX or IBM I. Well that's enough talking about the box, let's go and have a look at the one I actually have in a rack here in London in the UK. We've been using this machine for three months now and we're very pleased with it. I notice while editing it's too bright for you to see the S924 on this little uh, strip sticking out the front of the machine. Here's the uh, power button and LED, then we have the three LEDs, the blue identity and two for system fault and system roll up. We have a little blue tag in here and here that's used to pulling the bezel off, we'll do that in a minute. Looking at the disk we have D1 to D10 in here. The first set uh, is six and another six because we have a split black plane. This is the one running the first VO server, this one here is running the second VO server. Dual disk will be better. Over here is where an RDX is optionally placed. There's a small uh, USB connector in here. There's the uh, ops panel LCD uh, here. It's missing on this particular machine. We'll come back to look at that in a minute. Six blowers or air moving devices as IBM prefers to call them. Down in here, this is actually connected to the machine rather than the bezel. This, if you like, is the handle that you pop down and pull if you want to move the machine out of the uh, rack on the rails. Up in here, difficult to point to this, this is a new Power 9 uh, logo, blue and green uh, circles around it. 
Further down in here, there's a little hole in which you can push uh, an earth connector if you want to uh, earth yourself to the machine before doing maintenance. Now pull those blue tags, it comes off with uh, spring clips. Now we can see a little bit more of the uh, internals here. Mentioned the indicators, they're still here, they're connected to the frame and the two uh, handles for pulling it out, we'll do that later. And the earth position. You can see the uh, six blowers in here with bright green LEDs. They're camphored so that they, they go into the machine at the bottom so the handle will fit in there, doesn't stick out the front. Uh, you can very quickly pull out a a fan if you want to. Um, you can see it's a centrifugal fan in here, quite large, so that the uh, noise is quite reduced. Uh, we can just pop that back into the uh, machine. Need to uh, push it in a little bit more, then uh, move the handle. It also popped up an orange LED. You can't quite see it there. There it is. Uh, we told the HMC that something odd happened with the fan, but it's working again. In here is where the LCD optionally would go. Um, you can uh, order those or not. If you've got hundreds of machines, you're not going to be fiddling about with the LCD and the three little buttons. You can see the same details on the uh, HMC remotely. Right, I'll now move the machine out on the rails so we can then move the camera and look inside the machine. So here's a view of the top, there's two fantastic stickers on here, giving you lots and lots of information. At the front we have the details of the DIN slots. Socket uh, 1 is over here and socket 2 is over on the right. And the DIM sockets and uh, release catches are different colour combinations and they're very clearly numbered on the top. On the larger sticker we have the adapter slots and their numbers and the same for the discs at the front of the machine. Very good for customers and customer engineers. To take the lid off, we press the little blue catch, raise the little handle, the lid slides back about a centimetre, uh, then we'd lift the lid off. Just pointing out the uh, how good these labelling are. Fantastic when you're trying to work out uh, which is adapter slot C7, etc. Now we can see in here there's a big plastic cover and uh, air dam um, to improve the airflow inside the machine. We'll move the camera so you get a better look. Okay, that's better. We see this big plastic cover in here. This is uh, to increase the airflow across the dims at the bottom and around the heat sinks for the main uh, CPUs, power lines. So we can grab hold of the plastic air cover and uh, just pull it straight up, it's not uh, hard to do. We can see inside the machine. Obviously the two power line sockets are at the bottom here, great big heat sink. At the bottom there's the copper that actually connects to the processor and the big clamps. These are two voltage regulators in the copper in here. These protect the, uh, all the electronics from uh, problems with the power supply and actually power the machine down rather than letting it get damaged. Looking around, everything is very neat and tidy, well engineered. Now we have lots of dim stops, uh, 16 for each socket. Um, you can see here that some of the uh, dims have uh, black handles and some of them have white handles and the actual uh, socket itself are different colours. Those combinations tend to mean that you get the right ones when you are uh, actually changing the uh, memory. We also have plastic uh, inserts for uh, dummy dims if you like, for when we haven't got a real dim in a a socket, this increases the uh, air flow um, around the dam. Behind here in front of the camera if you like is the back of the disk drives, there's a small motherboard there that do the connections. Four power supplies uh, in the middle-ish, over here there's seven PCIe adapter slots, here there's five so it's not quite symmetric. The last one over here is the service processor with some uh, ethernet at the back in here. Uh, battery and this is the VBD with your activation codes as uh, we call it a lollipop but you can't really see it behind the heatsink. Down in this corner there's the light path diagnostics button that you press to see if there's any problems. Uh, this cage item in here allows a lot of airflow but it gives us a lot of rigidity to the uh, chassis. 
Along the sides of the dim slots and the dims are plastic runners uh, there to force the air to go down past the memory uh, and not escaping behind the um, CPU heat sinks. A few capacitors and things dotted around on the uh, motherboard. There's a few cables running in front to back. They're all tucked away out here so it doesn't interfere with any of the airflow to keep the memory and the CPUs nice and cool. So we'll put the air conduit or air dam, I'll have to go and look up the official name for this, back into the machine. Just popped in nicely. Then we'll get the lid. And we'll pop that down one inch back from where you want it to finally be or one centimeter there's a metal pin that sticks up through the handle in here let's sort of zoom into that the silvery thing there if that's sticking up then you've got it in the right position you pop that down and it all slides back into position left and right press the buttons in and then give it a little gentle push in and now we've released those so we'll go straight back into the machine Excellent. Now just dip over here and get the bezel and we'll pop that back on the front. Get it in the nice right position and give it a little sharp tap and we're in. We'll see the, the uh, warning lights on. That's because I took the fan out so it all looks good. Meanwhile, around the back of the rack. Okay, so let's have a quick look around the back of the machine. We're trying to keep things nice and tidy. This is the cable management arm so we loop back and forth and then the cables actually go to the machine. We've got nice little clips in here that keep all the cables down together. We're putting our ethernets in a bundle, our fibre channels in a bundle and the power supply. That tends to ease the pressure so we don't break any fibre channel cables. Here we go into the uh, two HMC ports on the back of the service processor. Four power supplies, higher rated than in, in power eight we've noticed and then we have the airflow ducts a bit like the uh, power 8 machines in here plenty of air can get out the back of the machine to keep the internals cool there's a big velcro uh, attached here so that uh, we don't have the power supply drop out if we move the machine now this cable management arm is connected to the back of the rack here the back of the machine here and the back of the rack in here and you're thinking well how on earth is that gonna work there's something fundamentally wrong in here, but we can show you a little bit of magic here. One, two, three. Abracadabra. So the middle of the arm slides down that little runner there and straightens out so that it can get it right out the front of the machine with the machine still running. So we can do live adapter swaps and those sorts of things. Then Mike will give it a push back and back it comes in. It's great, isn't it? We are really impressed with this piece of engineering. Took about 30 seconds to install it. So that's the first look at the S924. What's our impressions? Excellent engineering. We can see where they're making improvements for reliability. Everything just seems to install and run, and it runs quickly too, with zero changes to the applications. Some of my programs are, are from Power 6, 7, 8, all just run on the Power 9 processor, really nice and really quickly, no changes. We're using dual VO servers, shared storage pools, and Power VC, all just working as you'd expect. The Power VM Enterprise actually comes as no cost. Wow, that's a bit of a change. And also, we're allowing people to use a temporary power vm license so that you can use live partition mobility to move from your older machines to your power 9 machine we've been running lots of lpms between power 8 and power 9 all day long with no issues really works a treat the hmc does need to be running a new version of the software so you need to get ready for your first power 9 to arrive and yes it's nmon approved well what did you expect from the nmon guy well, if you enjoyed this video and learned something, then please click on the thumbs up sign. Comments are always useful. If you want to find more from my channel, here I am, youtube.com user Nigel A.R. Griffiths. Thank you.